Good morning, Bert. This is your morning mic check. Good morning, Bert. This is your morning mic check.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning all. We thank God again, and again, and again, for the gift of life, always. And we pray for the grace to utilize this life in serving him today. We are all sinners, always in need of God's mercy. Let us pray for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my thought, through my most grievous thought. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant that all that works for our good may be given to us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Tobit. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You are the judge of the world. And now, O Lord, may you be mindful of me and look with favor upon me. Punish me not for my sins, nor for my inadvertent offenses, nor for those of my ancestors. We sinned against you and disobeyed their commandments. So you handed us over to plundering, exile, and death, till you made us the talk and reproach of all the nations among whom you had despised us. Yes, your judgments are many and true in dealing with us as my sins and those of my ancestors deserve. For we have not kept your commandments nor have we trodden the path of truth before you. So now, deal with me as you please, and command my life breath to be taken from me, that I may go from the face of the earth into dust. It is better for me to die than to live, because I have heard insulting calumnies, and I have over and I am overwhelmed by grief. Lord, command me to be delivered from such anguish. Let me go to the everlasting abode. Lord, refuse me not, for it is better for me to die than to endure so much misery in life and to hear these insults. On the same day, at Egbatana, in Medea. It so happened that Raguel's daughter, Sarah, also had to listen to abuse from one of her father's maids, for she had been married to seven husbands. But the wicked demon, Asmodeus, killed them off before they could have intercourse with her, as it is prescribed for wives. So the maid said to her, You are the one who strangles your husband. Look at you. You have already been married seven times, but you have had no joy with any one of your husbands. Why do you beat us? Is it on account of your seven husbands? Because they are dead? May we never see a son or daughter of yours. The girl was deeply saddened that day 
and she went into an upper chamber of her house where she planned to hang herself. But she reconsidered, saying to herself, No, people would level this insult against my father, who had only one beloved daughter, but she hung herself because of, all, because of ill fortune. And thus would I cause my father in his old age to go down to the Netherlands laden with sorrow. It is far better for me not to hang myself, but to beg the Lord to have me die so that I need no longer live to hear such insults. At that time, then, she spread out her hands and facing the window, poured out her prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. All that very time, at that very time, the prayers of these two suppliants was heard in the glorious presence of Almighty God. So Raphael was sent to heal them both, to remove the cataract from Toby's eyes, so that he might again see God's sunlight, and to marry Raphael's daughter Sarah to Toby's son Tobiah and then drive the wicked demon as models from her. The word of the Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you I trust, let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. No one who waits for you shall be put to shame. Those shall be put to shame who heedlessly break faith. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God, my Savior. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus, he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died leaving no descendants, and the third likewise, and the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife is she going to be? For all seven have been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled? Because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. 
He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. The Sadducees don't believe the resurrection. They believe everything ends here. But when you read the, 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 the Bible, the word of God, from the beginning to the end, it tells you and I that everything does not end here. One thing I keep asking myself, are there still Sadducees, not in the Jewish territory, in our own territory, are there still Sadducees who don't believe in the resurrection? Yes. A whole lot of them, especially in America. There are a whole lot of people who don't believe there is anything like a life after this. And they live their lives as if everything ends here. And those people, when they run into one difficulty or the other, the next thing is, go and hang yourself. Go and commit suicide. Because all your hope has been placed on whatever is obtainable here. And because that has failed, every hope is lost. The temptation to go and commit suicide becomes inevitable. But when you believe that there is a life after this, and that you are not just the person fully, uh, fully in control of what is happening, you have faith. Listen, things are very bad in Nigeria, where I come from. What we go through, I don't know about Ghana, I don't know about other, I know things are bad in Africa, yes, generally. What we go through over there, some people who are in this America cannot go through it. If they do, they will commit suicide. If they do, they will get, they will get fed up and they will, they will just take their lives and go. They will tell you, enough is enough, I can't take this. But what keeps sustaining us is the hope that even if it is bad now, the next minute, or the next day, or the next week, or the next month, something may turn around. Because we believe that no matter how we try as human beings, we are not totally in control of this life. That is why you still see people in Nigeria upon the, the whole stories you hear, people in Africa upon the whole stories you hear about that place. They are still cheerful. They are still moving. They are not committing suicide like, ah, I'm tired. I can't move on. My advice I keep giving to myself, and I will also give to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Never you place yourself on any human being. Never you place your, your hope on anything on this earth. Definitely they will fail at one point in time or the other. They will fail at one point in time or the other. Do not even place your, on the only system you think, uh, oh, you hear the story about Titanic, that big ship which made them to act the movie, night or whatever. That the person who built it said, oh, even God cannot capsize this ship. What capsized the, the Titanic? Upon the whole technological advancement and the engineering and whatever. Just an iceberg. <laughs> Just an iceberg. Something that didn't even come into the picture. Just something that looks fragile. Something that just cannot add up. Why will this little thing capsize this thing that has been timed 
so much engineering has gone into it that oh, it cannot even God cannot capsize it. You cannot capsize it. Just you know. so God has given us this life to take dominion, to take charge, to enhance Him, but it does not belong to us. We keep discovering things, fine, but then it does not belong to us. I don't want you to, to get, get over to the camp of the Sadducees who believe that there is no resurrection. Every child of God must believe that everything does not end here. There is the life after here. And that is that life in the resurrection. And that is that life Jesus has promised us that if we live well here, if we live well believing in God, keeping our hands clean, believing no matter the challenges we go through, we have our ticket for that life. And that life is the better one. But there are a whole lot of Pharisees who are around us in our offices, in our families, on, on the road, who believe that everything ends here. There is no resurrection, uh, like a, uh, uh, maybe like Sarah. They want to hang themselves when things do, do not go the way they want to go. Let us look at Tobit. Thank God Sarah, at a point in time, got herself back and said, no, I'm not going to commit suicide. God. You own this life, take it. And at that point in time, something happened in heaven. And an angel was sent to go and take care of the situation. God is it. He's still real. He's still active. And the promise of the resurrection by Jesus is not just a, 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 a fabrication. It's real. Let us keep believing. No matter the challenges, do not allow any Sadducee around you to convert you to believe that everything ends here. There is no God. There is no resurrection. Everything ends here. No. I know some of you are maybe, maybe have the opportunity in life or still having the opportunity to work within the, the health facilities. You, you see that when someone wants to live this life, if they tell you what they experience, a lot of people regret some decisions they have made when they were energetic because they now start seeing things clearly as they are. That this life doesn't belong to us. And let's keep having faith. Spread this message. If you meet any Pharisee, tell him there is resurrection. Tell him there is the life after this one. Tell him God exists. Tell him if you live well, loving God and loving your fellow human being, that that life, you have the ticket for it. As I tell myself, I also tell you, keep your faith strong. Do not allow anything to push you off or to make you to attempt committing suicide. You don't own this life. God owns it. And he calls you back whenever he wants to call you back. Not your own. Put on your own terms. And the good Lord continue to help us. And may Jesus continue to strengthen us. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread, the spiritual drink.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Good and good as all his holy church. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heads. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, with fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, and with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, and will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Jose our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who saith to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Governed by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your son, and professing you not just in word, but in speech, but also in works and in truth. You, we may marry to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying God by our life.